Alright. <clears throat> yeah, 10 most disturbing text messages ever received. These are, I think, more like short stories. Um, I think. But it could just be a list. I've just found this matey, and I think a lot of his stuff is stories, but it could just be a list. But uh, either way, it sounds interesting. Most disturbing text messages. Uh, yeah, let's go. This happened during the middle of the night when I was home alone. I was in our house's living room when I felt my phone buzz from inside my pocket. I pulled it out and noticed it was a text from an unknown number. It simply read, How's your show? Now, I was in fact watching TV, but I thought it was either spam or someone that had the wrong number, so I deleted it and kept on with my night. Around 10 minutes later, I got another text from the same number. This time it read, Don't ignore me. I started to get kind of freaked out. That's when I got the last text. I'll always be watching. Look outside. I looked out the living room window just to the left of me. Across the street, the light from a flashlight turned on in an upstairs window of one of the houses, and I could see the vague silhouette of a person slowly waving. The house he was in had been abandoned for at least a year up until that point. I called the police and later on would follow a restraining order against what turned out to be some older guy. I still have no idea who he was or how he got my phone number. That's weird. That is I use dating weird. apps somewhat frequently. This comes from the perspective of a female. I was talking to this one guy who kept insisting that we should meet tonight. I wasn't all that interested, so I started slowly responding less and less before I stopped responding altogether. After a while, I noticed he double texted me. Curious, I opened the app to see what he said. His character took a complete 180 flip. He said something about how he was just going to drive his car to come and find me. I refreshed the app and saw the distance drop from saying he was 20 miles away to one mile away. Then the third text in a row. I'm close now. I block. At first I was going to say I'm kind of on his side. Because I think every boy on this planet has had a girl like ghost them. And it hurt her pride. And then fucking go, you fucking bitch. Saying I'm coming to see you is a bit. I'm gonna get in my car and come to look for you is a bit weird. But then the fucking 20 miles away, that's fucking weird. That's where the line draws. I think every boy I have, I spoke to girls where you fucking, they start fucking mugging you off and, and not answering or whatever. And it does, as a man, it hurts your pride. So your personality does change, and you're like, yeah, fuck you. There's a fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, I never actually threatened violence, no, and I've never said I'm coming to your house, I don't, never. That's mainly because I'm extremely lazy, I think. I'm definitely not that motivated to actually go anywhere. <laughs> but yeah, let's, let's listen to this creepy motherfucker. That is weird. This is fucking weird. Not from saying he was 20 miles away to one mile away. Then the third text in a row. I'm close now. I blocked his profile immediately and turned off all the lights in my apartment. I've since disabled the setting that allows the app to use my location. Yeah, why do you have that? Why the fuck? Like, my niece does it. An older lot, younger lot do it. And the girls, and you're like, are you fucking mad? I, just don't, I don't get that. It's fucking crazy. I don't even like fucking Google knowing my location. Yeah, let's go. When I was in high school, I used to play a lot of CSGO. I remember one game in particular. It started out fine. The teammates I got paired up with were actually pretty nice. But later on, we started losing, and one of them started getting really aggressive towards the rest of us. I remember I told him something like to calm down, or you know, just to relax because it was just a game. That's when, directed at me, he said, I'm going to kill you in real life. Obviously, I didn't take the threat seriously. After the game, he sent me a friend request. I accepted it, expecting him to trash talk and go off about how bad I was. 
Instead, he sent me my complete address, my dad's full name, and my phone number. I instantly blocked the account. I was beyond terrified. Especially when you consider the fact that CSGO is only playable on Steam, and Steam doesn't make any of your actual personal details publicly available. I was solo tent camping at a campground in the mountains. Wait. It was night and I was laying in my tent on my phone. Now, if you don't know, Apple has this thing known as AirDrop. It's basically something that allows iOS devices to send photos, videos, or files to other nearby iOS devices without needing Wi-Fi or cellular data. A notification showed up on my phone, covering the whole middle section of the screen. It was an AirDrop request. It read, iPhone would like to share a photo. Underneath that, it gave a smaller preview of the photo itself. The photo was dark, clearly taken at night. I turned my brightness to the max, and could now make out a tent in the photo. It also had text overlaying it, reading, I watch you in your sleep. I couldn't tell if the tent was mine. I was going to press accept so I could see the entire picture and get a better look, but whoever sent it canceled the request before I could press it. I packed up my stuff in the dark and left that night. I was pretty shaken up over the whole experience. Yeah, fuck that, because if someone air dropping into you, that means they're near to you anyway. Fuck that shit. I run a small business in my area, which I have my personal phone number attached to. Basically, customers will reach out via text, or sometimes a phone call to request an order. I'll then manually deliver the product to them at a predetermined meetup spot. One day, I got a text from a customer who I met up with about a week prior. I assumed it would just be a thank you, or a review as I often get those. I opened it, but oddly it just said, I like your shirt. I remember specifically I was wearing a shirt with this Transformers logo on it at the time. The text was weird, and I didn't really know how to respond, so I just texted back thanks. Almost immediately after I sent it, I got another text, this time saying, I like Transformers too. My heart dropped. I was sitting at home at the time. I immediately got up and moved away from the window that was right next to me. I replied saying I was willing to call the police. I told him I had his number and remembered exactly what his face looked like. Realistically, this wasn't true. I had too many customers in my phone to keep track of, but this still seemed to work as I never got another text back from him. Mm. Yeah. That was a good threat. Yeah, even if it's not true, just fucking throw it at the wall and see if it sticks. Yeah. This happened around the time my wife and I got our first apartment in the city. It was around Christmas time. We were both out of the house Christmas shopping together, and I noticed two messages on my phone. One was notifying me of a missed call, and the other was a voicemail. I checked to see who it was from, and it was from our apartment's landline. We didn't live with anyone else, and on top of that, my phone was brand new, so no one even had my new number yet. We decided to listen to the voicemail, but it was no longer than a couple of seconds. All we could hear was the sound of someone hanging up the phone before it went quiet, followed by the dead tone. As far as we know, the only way someone could have used our landline was by entering our apartment, but nothing else came of the situation. We still don't know what exactly happened that day. I had just gotten back to my apartment from a night out at a couple of bars with a friend. I was in bed and drifting off to sleep when my phone went off. The same friend I was just out with had texted me. I unlocked my phone and went into our conversation. I read the text. Word for word, it read, I think I killed him. I had no idea what he was talking about. It honestly scared me. I tried calling him multiple times, but each time he didn't answer. I ended up driving to his house to find he was asleep in bed. After banging on his door multiple times, he finally got up to open it. I confronted him about the text, but he swore he never sent that to me. The text didn't even show up on his phone either. I honestly still don't even know what to make of the whole situation. That's weird. Sometime last year, I was on my phone when I noticed I got a message notification on Facebook. I opened it up and it was probably some 20 year old guy who said, Are you my full legal name? Now, no one really knows my full name, so I figured it had to be someone I knew. 
I opened his page and discovered he lived on the complete other side of the US. I checked for mutual friends and we didn't even have one. And based on what he looked like, I was 99% sure I had never met the guy. I ended up responding with something like, uh, yeah, do I know you? To this, he responded, I am going to murder you, with one of those smiley faces at the end. I don't typically scare easy, but this shook me to my core. I reported the conversation to Facebook through the reporting system, but who knows if that actually did anything. As far as I'm aware, I still have him blocked. Why would you block him? I was around- That's the dumbest thing. Oh uh, yeah, come at me blood. 16 or 17 when this happened. I was on one of our school's buses in my gym clothes. I remember I was sitting in the back on my phone. Then uh, all of a sudden I got a text from an unsaved number with an area code I didn't recognize. I began reading the text. Are you not cold in those thin clothes? Immediately I looked up. It was cold outside and like I mentioned I was in my gym clothes. I kept looking around, but as far as I could tell, no one was even looking in my direction. I didn't think anyone in the bus even had my phone number. I was still looking around, when I got another text. Stop looking, you're not gonna find me. This genuinely scared me. I blocked the number and tried to forget about it. Nothing more ever happened. That's weird. I often get off of work late at night. This night was no different. I live close to where I work, so I just walk. I was doing just that, when I got a text. Turn around, I'm at the end of the street. I had the number in my contacts, it was a kid I vaguely knew from school. I turned around and saw headlights at the end of the street growing closer. I was extremely creeped out. When he pulled up next to me, he insisted he give me a ride home, to which I sternly rejected. After much pleading, he eventually drove off. How we found out where I worked, and more importantly when my shift ended that day, I never found out. <laughs> the last one. I think he just uh, fancied her, uh, but just didn't have the game. Just, just has not got the subtlety of game. Like, don't do that. Be probably thought, yeah, I'll just give her a lift home. She'd have loved me for it. She just finished work, I'll give her a lift home. Yeah. But there was a lot of, like, getting a message. People saying, I'm watching you, or that giving their name, or whatever. And then just nothing happening after. He's just scammers or just some kid fucking fucking around with his mates. I don't know. Let me know what you think. But anyway, and if you've ever had a creepy message like that never come up. I haven't. I had, a, I had a threatening voicemail the other day. It was weird. It sounded like it went, fucking, if that had anything to do with you, I was like, huh? I was like, what the fuck is that? And it didn't even ring, it just went straight into voicemail. And I was like, what the fuck? I just ignored it, because I was thinking, I don't know what the fuck that is. And then uh, <laughs> about an hour later, I got a text message saying, uh, I'll send you a voicemail by mistake, ignore it. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the reaction, sweet.